Hello. So I'm, of course, sorry to hear that you're feeling stressed out about this test, but hopefully you will find these uh, videos useful. Let's just go through problem by problem. Let me see, share my screen. So we'll start with the integration problems in this video. So let's start with problem one. So what we see here is a product and we also see a composition. E to the x cubed is the composition of the exponential function with the cubic function. And the derivative of this cubic function, 3x squared, is very close to what we have here. We're only off by a constant. And situations like that are where U substitution comes into play. If we let u be x cubed, then du would be 3x squared dx. And we are very close to having that. We have a 2 instead of a 3. But if we wanted to have a three, we could we would throw in a one third as well, of course. We don't want to actually change this integrand. Then this two and this one third, we don't want those here. Fortunately, constants, we can just pull out of integrals. Like so. Then 3x squared and dx turn to du x cubed is u and we have two thirds the integral of e to the u du. The exponential is its own derivative, and hence its own antiderivative. The antiderivative of this is this. U, what was U up here? u is x cubed, so we'll just take that and plug it in. And two thirds of a constant is still just a constant. So we'll still just write plus c. Moving on to the second question.
So you see this square root and you see subtraction in the square root. Hopefully that makes you think of inverse trig stuff. If instead of a 2x squared, we had a u squared, this integral would just be the arc sign. So can we rewrite this so that we have a u squared? Well, 2x squared is the square root of 2 times x squared. So if we let u be that, we'd have 1 minus u squared, just what we want. Well, if we're going to do a u substitution, then we need du as well. We don't have the square root of two, but if we're just missing a constant, that's not really a big deal. We can put in a square root of two. We'll simply divide by it as well. And this three will remain there. In the denominator, we have one minus the square root of two times x squared. And now this will turn into du. This will turn into u. That was the whole point. We've got a three and a one over the square root of two. We don't want those, but fortunately constants can just be pulled out of integrals. And this is the arc sign. It's three over the square root of two. Times the arc sign of u plus c. And I ended up pulling this three out, as you can see. And u is what? U is the square root of two times x. Plus c. And there's problem two. Let's go back to this sheet and let's roll forwards. The integral from zero to one, so a definite integral this time. of r times the square root 
of one minus r squared dr. So just like in the first problem, you see a combination of composition and multiplication. We've got this inside function, this function inside a square root. And we almost have the derivative of this inside function. The derivative of one minus r squared is negative two r. So we're missing a negative two. But a negative two is a constant. We could put that in if we want. And this sounds like a recipe for U substitution. Um, as I say, we do need this negative two, but we can put in a negative one half along with a negative two. and get to this. And R is still going from zero to one. That negative one half, we don't want, we just put it this in here so we could get this. So we'll pull it out of the integral. Negative two R dr is going to turn into du. And we'll get the square root of u du. And now R is going from zero to one. U is not going from zero to one, or at least it doesn't have to be. What's U going to? Well, when R is zero, U is one minus zero squared, When r is one, u is one minus r squared. So these are our new limits of integration. u is u to the one half. So one half plus one is three halves. A two third out front. And now what? Well, when we put zero in here, we get zero. When we put one in here, you um one to the three halves is one. Negative one half and negative two thirds give us positive two sixths, which is also one third. We could have done this a little differently. Um, we could have just sort of ignored the definite integral and said, well, the indefinite integral
is found using U substitution And then this can be rewritten in terms of R, negative two sixths times U to the three halves. And once we found the indefinite, integral, we can use the fundamental theorem to find the definite integral. Now, R is going from zero to one. R is going from zero to one. And we get the same thing. Plug one in here, get to zero. Plug zero in here, get negative one third. Zero minus negative one third is positive one third. So it's just a matter of making sure your limits match up with your variables. If our variable is going to be a U, our limits have to be telling us what you is doing. If our variable was going to stay R, our limits should tell us what R is doing. And now back. to the test, 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth, an indefinite integral. Let me copy this down and share. my uh, my document camera, and here we go. This is the kind of problem that you might have to do a little trial and error with. I mean, it basically has to be some kind of U substitution but it might not be immediately clear what U substitution is appropriate. So we just try to think, well, what does this look most like? It looks a little like an arc tangent. An arc tangent wouldn't have a 2x up here. And an arc tangent would have a square instead of a fourth power. But it's hard to think of anything it looks more like than an arc tangent. So can we make this be an arc tangent? Now, to be an arc tangent, we don't want 
a fourth power, we want something being squared. So if we let u be x squared, we'd have our wish. This would become one plus u squared. Of course, if we're going to do a u substitution, we need du as well. And this time we don't have to um, multiply in any constants. 2x dx is precisely what we have. This is one over one plus u squared du. That's the arc tangent. And u is x squared. So that's the arc tangent of x squared plus c. Let me see. In this sample test, I think there's just one more integral. I might uh, might put a few more integrals on your actual test. A few fewer um, geometric problems probably nothing quite like 14, but um, on this sample test, there's just one more integral left to go. So, This integral, and let me let me share my document camera. Again, this might require some trial and error. This looks a little like an arc tangent but I don't think that's going to get us anywhere. An arc tangent shouldn't have this sum being squared. Thinking about it a little more, this is composition. We've got an inside function and an outside function. And this is almost the derivative of the inside function. If u were four plus r squared, then du would almost be five r. So you maybe know the drill by now. If we want to have a two, but we have a different constant, that's not a real issue. We'll multiply this two in, but we'll also multiply by one half. This 2r dr 
is going to become du. This four plus r squared squared is going to become u squared. The five and the one half are unwanted. Fortunately, they're just constant, so we can pull them out of the integral. This is u to the negative second power. So anti-differentiating it is hopefully straightforward. We'll bump negative two up to negative one, but we'll also divide by negative one. So that's negative five halves times u to the negative first. u to the negative first, we could, if we wanted to, rewrite as one over u. Uh, by the way, let's not forget our constant of integration. The real important thing is to go from u back to our original variable. And that gives us this. So, be able to do integrals like this. As I said, I actually would expect more than five integrals on the test. I know it's kind of skewed if you look at the number of sections we covered on stuff like volume versus the one section we covered on a U substitution and the one section we covered on um, inverse trig functions. But material like this is going to keep showing up in chapter eight. Whereas material like the volume, you won't see again until, gosh, until chapter 10, very briefly, and then the final exam. So even if we didn't spend as much time on it, mass, um, being able to do basic U substitution is pretty important. 